British outstanding young Chinese person prize. Three minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. giving quite a lot of these speeches recently, right? So I thought today, because I'm getting quite repetitive, I would freestyle a bit about my past and what kind of led me to where I am today. So hi, my name is Toto. I grew up in London, North London, in this like hole in the wall in Camden Town, right? And I remember when I was young, feeling so unlucky, feeling like the world was kind of against me, you know? I was like, why do we have to live here? Why is there this brothel next to our home? Why do people keep breaking into our house? And then I remember at school seeing my British classmates, and I wouldn't really feel like one of them, you know. But at the same time, I felt very different from my Chinese and my Asian classmates too, so I was kind of like in the middle. I didn't really know where I belonged, and to be honest with you, I didn't really know who I was. And at the same time, there was a huge distance with my dad, right? So my dad never told me my career, and uh, I remember seeing my British classmates and thinking, they're so lucky. They're so lucky to be able to talk to their dads and to discuss their homework and their love life and Shakespeare and all these things, and I can't do that. So I felt like the world was really against me. I felt very, very sorry for myself. And I don't really like when people talk about their struggle or how hard things were, but I bring it up because I want to share a moment with you guys, okay? I've never actually spoken about this before in my videos. I don't really talk about how hard things are or my struggles. I like to share positive things. But I want to share this moment with you because one day, and I don't know, remember, I can't remember exactly when it was, but one day I woke up and I just said to myself, Toto, stop complaining. Get over it, you know, let it go. And that moment was so important to me. To me, it wasn't even just like a moment, it was like an experience, kind of like an epiphany. I was like, you know what, I have to let it go. And I think in that moment, I really found my confidence and I found who I was. And I realized it's okay to be both British and Chinese. And to me, it's so important because I think identifying as who you are is one of the most important key things in life. Actually, I think it's like the secret for joy, to find your confidence and to have a good relationship with yourself. So in my life, I've been through other difficulties too, you know, I've had failure and heartbreak and all these different things, but I've always had quite a good relationship with myself. And I always loved performing, but after that moment, from that moment onwards, I felt like I could perform at any time, anywhere. I just love getting on stage and speaking. I love the sound of my own voice, right? So to me, that moment was very important. And I don't know what the secret is. I don't know how you find that confidence. But I know that it's really, really important and it's a big inspiration for me for why I do what I do, my various performance work. Especially because I have so many other BBC friends, second generation Chinese, British born Chinese. And many of them feel like their only option is to totally assimilate into Western culture. They feel like they have to become British. And to me, that's a real shame. And I think it all comes down to confidence. It comes down to your relationship with yourself. And so to me, that just breaks my heart. And I hope they don't lose their Chinese background and lose their heritage. Because I think identifying as the race you really are, or the gender that you really are, or just the person that you are, like I said, is one of the keys in life to joy. So that's really, really important to me. It's a big, big, big inspiration. Now, another inspiration I want to share with you guys is media. The representation of Asians in media. To me, this is just unreal. It's shocking. It breaks my heart. Because when I grew up, right, I grew up in London, I didn't really watch Chinese movies that much or Chinese media. Most of the information, the culture that I took in was from the States, was from the USA. And I remember when I was young, feeling so impressed by and so inspired by how many people from different backgrounds were in American movies. American actors, directors, singers, pop stars, rappers, all these different things. But I remember also thinking, where are the Asians at, you know? And to this day, I still can't think for the life of me of a really real and genuine and natural Asian character. I feel like in films, there's always an Asian Chinese character, but they're always playing that Asian character or that Chinese character. There's no normal people. This is not the real world. They're underrepresented. I mean, Bruce Lee is my hero, right? But we don't all live the life of Bruce Lee. We don't have the skills, right? So, you know, to find real representation and real people in those films, to me, would be a fantastic way to combat racism, okay? Let's just remember that, like, in the not-so-distant past, we had not only no Asian characters, but we had no black characters or Native American characters. We had white actors playing these roles, you know, drawing two lines across your face to be Native American or putting on blackface to be black. And think how far we've come since then. 
Think how important this real representation is in terms of breaking stereotypes and also making racism what exactly what it should be, which is the most uncool and disgusting thing in the world. So I really hope that in my lifetime, okay, I don't know if I'll make it, but by the time I'm 70, by the time I have grandkids, my kids will grow up in a world where there's more and more real Asian characters. And that's why when I perform, I always do it in my way. I do it like Toto, right? A lot of people say to me, they say, Toto, you're too annoying, you're too loud, you're too arrogant, you're too brash, you're too obnoxious, tone it down. But I don't want my cut off, you know? I wanna be me, I wanna do it in my way. And so I always say, let me be me and let me speak as myself. I think it's the most, most, most important thing. And sometimes when I see events or TV shows being promoted in London, and there are a lot, okay? There are some fantastic things going on to promote Chinese culture in London. But a lot of the time, Westerners watch these shows. Okay, recently I was hosting the Mooncake Festival show, and some Westerners say, this is really cool, but it's quite robotic, quite rigid. You know, it feels a little bit like propaganda. It's not natural. And so I think it's really, really important that actually we have young Chinese, young Asians in the West being themselves and showing themselves. And I always, always, always want to spread my message, which is that whoever you are, I don't care about your race, your gender, your age, I could not care less. Be you and be proud and be confident and be happy. And I'm no Christian, but I want to always spread love and be kind and share kindness and share love. And I have three words for you in English and four words for you in Chinese. Peace and love. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It is very nice to have a word with us, a very, very touching speech.